on behalf of your parents, your spouses, your partners, your children, the faculty and the staff of Santa Fe Community College and the board, we would like to congratulate our students on their achievements. We acknowledge the hard work and dedication that has brought each one of you here tonight. Chris Abeta will introduce our keynote speaker, Mayor Julian Castro. For those of you who know me, I'm a musician. And uh, the way I want to introduce this gentleman is with a song that I wrote, and it's called El Hombre Pensando. And El Hombre Pensando is saying that if you're thinking, and El Hombre refers to both men and women, El Hombre Pensando is you. It's this gentleman up here, it's all of us. And thinking is what makes it. So I'm gonna sing the song. And uh, it, it says, anyone, you know, Latino Americanos, Americanos from here. Uh, and then it talks about one thing on my last verse. It, it talks about the people from down on the west side, Alto Street and San Francisco Street. And it talks about the people from up on the east side, Don Miguel and San Acacio. So that's, that's right. Latino Americano, Latino Tropical, Hermano Mexicano, Mi Raza de Atzlán. Mujer y hombre pensando, ustedes cambian este mundo y el tiempo va corriendo y cambiando todo. Es el hombre de ahí abajo, de calle San Francisco y Alto. Es el hombre de ahí arriba, de Don Miguel y San Acacio. Mujer y hombre pensando, ustedes cambian este mundo. Y el tiempo va corriendo y cambiando nosotros, viviendo mi vida. Como un pobre Con la riqueza De mi corazón El hombre pensando El hombre pensando Les presento Julián Castro Good afternoon. First of all, thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias to Chairman Aveta for that wonderful introduction. Thank you very much for your song. I can't say that I've ever been introduced that way before. <laughs> to uh, the Board of Trustees, thank you very much for the opportunity to address the graduates of Santa Fe Community College. Uh, to Chairman Guzman, congratulations on the completion of your first year. Sorry, President Guzman, as president of the community college, congratulations. This year, there are more than 200 more graduates walking the stage than there were last year. So you all deserve a great round of applause. And congratulations on your leadership in getting that done. To all of the parents, the grandparents, the tías, the tíos, the nieces, the nephews, the children, a big thank you 
from everyone in this room. Congratulations to you for all the nights that you, you spent staying up late worrying about your children, for all the soccer practices or baseball practices or academic decathlons that you put off what you wanted to do for to take them to, for all the student loans you helped them take out, <laughs> for all of the sacrifices that you made in your own life so that they could stand here proudly with you today. Muchisimas gracias. Thank you. To the faculty and the staff of Santa Fe Community College for the excellent work that you do day in and day out to prepare our graduates for the world ahead of them so that they can compete in a 21st century global economy that demands their skills. A big thank you to you as well. And of course, a huge congratulations to the graduates today for all the sacrifices that y'all made for the dreams that you've had, that you followed up on, that you worked hard for, for all the late nights that you spent studying instead of going out, the quizzes and the tests over the years that you crammed for and you never thought that you were going to actually pass and you did, for the goals that you set and you've met. Congratulations, graduates of 2013. You know that you're moving on to another stage in life when you start renting things. When we get married, it's a tuxedo or a reception hall. When we graduate, it's these funny things. You're always moving on, it seems, to another stage in life. And commencement is such a special moment in all of our lives. Even though commencement often seems like an ending, because in a very real way it is, your time here at Santa Fe Community College is coming to an end, the word actually means a beginning. This is the beginning of another important phase in your life. I've had the opportunity now to serve as mayor of San Antonio for four years. And a couple of months after I got elected, I had a meeting with a woman about I don't know what anymore. But toward the end of the meeting, she gave me this gift. And you have to understand that when you're an elected official and the elected officials in the room can vouch for this, you get a lot of gifts, mostly little trinkets that people give you. I, in fact, I probably have about 200 t-shirts and about five of them fit me because they always give me a large. And toward the end of our meeting, the woman gave me a little bag and in the bag was a prayer card. And I opened it up and I looked at the prayer card and the prayer card was for the Saint Thomas More. And I didn't know it at the time, but Thomas More is actually the, saint, the patron saint of lawyers and politicians. That's true. And she said, oh, I wanted to give you this prayer card for the journey that you're starting here as mayor. And I thanked her for it. And then at, right as she was about to leave, she turned around and she said, you know, he was beheaded. <laughs> That's true also. It seems in our lives that every single time we start another stage in life, we always think, wow, what have I gotten myself into? That's what I thought four years ago, and that's what I bet you thought when you started your journey at Santa Fe Community College. In fact, we have this sort of next stage in life-ism that sometimes challenges us, puts obstacles in front of us as we try to meet our goals. 
I remember many years ago sitting in an eighth grade classroom and listening to a teacher get after folks who were sitting behind me and wagging her finger at a student and telling him that he might get away with horseplay in the eighth grade, but there was no way that he was going to get away with that when we went to high school. And then I remember being in high school, and y'all may remember this, and hearing that in college it was so hard that you had to study three hours for every one hour that you were in class. Does anybody remember that? Did anybody actually do that? I remember being a senior in college and hearing as I was applying to law school that law school was so difficult, it was so competitive that students would actually go to the library and tear out important pages of books that other students needed so that that student could get the best grade in the class. And I remember being a third year law student getting ready to graduate and hearing that the working world, the practice of law was so difficult that you'd go in at 6.30 in the morning and you wouldn't get home until 9.30 at night. And all of that was part of this sort of next stage in life-ism that all of us go through, that I know I went through. And you know what I, I found in my life? was that the next stage in life is always a little bit more difficult than the stage before. But it's not so much more difficult that you can't handle it. If you keep on doing exactly what you've been doing, exactly what led you to this moment, setting a goal and then working hard for it, getting past the obstacles, working with others to accomplish those goals, there's every single reason that you should believe that your being here today is an affirmation that all of the life, all of the places that life will take you next, to the working world, to a university, to grad school, that you will meet those challenges too. I come from San Antonio, the west side of San Antonio as well, and I grew up there with my mother and my grandmother, and a twin brother whose name is Joaquin. And the grandmother that I grew up with, like many of your parents and grandparents, came from Mexico. She came when she was only six years old and she came as an orphan. Her mother and her father had passed away. She and her three-year-old sister came to live with relatives in San Antonio and by the time I was born, my mother had gone on to high school and then gone on to college. And we grew up seeing both the promise of what could be in my mother and also what could have been in my grandmother. She had spent her life working as a maid, a cook, and a babysitter after dropping out in the fourth grade. And I remember sitting in an auditorium like this as I was about to enter sixth grade and listening to an administrator talk to all of the future middle schoolers. And almost in this cliched way that folks talk in the movies, saying that we should look around the room because the chances were that up to half of us wouldn't be there by the time it was time to graduate the eighth grade and go on to high school. I also remember that day that my mother yanked us out of that school and put us in a different middle school because she said that she would never entrust her children, her boys, to folks who didn't believe that they could even get past the eighth grade. And I'm reminded of that today, sitting here with all of our parents and grandparents, as we reflect on the goals that you've set for yourself. Because I have no doubt that one of the lessons you've learned in life, and that I know I have, is that one of the best things that you can do for yourself going forward 
is to always surround yourself with people who love you, people who believe in you, people who lift you up, people who think more of you than oftentimes you think of yourself. I'm sure in your own lives you've known the opposite. You've known folks that you call friends or sometimes, unfortunately, relatives who think you should settle, and maybe don't think that you can do it, or sometimes they're negative. Find in your life the people who are like guardian angels, the people who create in you a sense of possibility about what you can do, what you can achieve, what you can be. Folks who have an appreciation for who you are as a person and your God-given potential. Today, you're surrounded by them. And as you go forward in the rest of your life, I hope that you continue to collect those people so that they can continue to lift you up to even greater places. After I graduated from law school, I came back to my hometown of San Antonio. And for those of y'all who have any lawyers in the family, you know that the first thing you do after law school is that you take the bar exam. Nobody wants to take the bar exam, but you have to take the bar exam to be a lawyer. And my brother, who also graduated with me, he and I took the bar exam in July of 2000, the summer after we graduated. And the way that you find out whether or not you pass the bar exam is that you go on the internet, on the State Bar website, and if you pass the bar, you're on a list of hundreds of people's names from across the state of Texas. And on the night of October 30th, 2000, I went onto the State Bar website and I saw my name on the list. And I was so happy, I was so overjoyed, because I had racked up $80,000 of student loans to go to law school and studied for two and a half months for the bar and I thought that I had just passed the last big test in my life. Of course, that was before I had a child. And so the next day, Halloween, October 31st, I went to sell a celebratory lunch with Erica, who I was dating at the time and who is now my wife, and I got to the restaurant a little bit early. And there was a hostess who was standing behind a podium like this one. And I went up to her and I said that there would be two of us for lunch and that I was a little bit early. And then I sort of stepped aside and I was quiet for a couple of moments. And y'all might think that all people in elective office are actually very talkative, that everybody's an extrovert, but that's not true. Some of us are fairly quiet. But I was in such a great mood that day, I just couldn't contain myself. I blurted out to her. I just passed the bar. She said, oh, you're going to be a bartender? <laughs> and I remember that moment because that was obviously very funny, and I had to correct her and tell her that I was actually going to be a lawyer. But in the back of my mind, I also remember that moment because the truth is that you and I and folks who hold a degree, we're still too rare. Particularly in urban communities and minority communities, there's so many generations before us who had the brains and the talent and the dreams that you and I have and have had, but they never had the opportunity. They never had the chance to go to the places that you are and that you're going. And that moment has always reminded me of how blessed we are to have the opportunities that we do and to live in the time that we do. You see, if you had asked my grandmother before she passed away whether she knew what the bar exam was, she would have told you no. And I bet if we went around the room and asked that question, that that would be a common answer. Seize the opportunities that you have. 
to meet your goals and to change the world, to do things that will make the people who sacrificed for you in life so proud. They've had dreams that they wanted to accomplish for themselves that, because of circumstances and timing, they were never able to accomplish. I bet many of them never walked a stage like this in college. Many of them may not even have walked a stage to graduate from high school. But you are. And you have the power to continue to reach for your dreams and to achieve them and to do right by all of them who sacrificed for you and had those dreams for themselves and now have them for you. Today as mayor, I had the opportunity all the time to go into classrooms throughout San Antonio. And one of the things that I like to do from the very beginning is that I, I go into mostly elementary and middle school classrooms and with the elementary school students, as soon as I get into the classroom, I introduce myself and then I ask the students what they want to be in life and I ask them to raise their hand and I say, who wants to be a doctor? And everybody's hand goes up and I ask them, who wants to be a teacher? And hands go up. I ask them, who wants to be an architect, an engineer? I ask them, who wants to be LeBron James? And like all the guys' hands go up. Sometimes I ask them whether they want to be a politician and nobody's hand goes up. <laughs> but I always come away from that amazed by the spark of self-confidence and enthusiasm and the passion and the self-assuredness they have that they're going to become that astronaut or that doctor or that lawyer or that teacher or that architect or that engineer. They know it in their bones that they're going to do it. And the truth is that there's a lot that all of us, as we get older, can learn from them. That this world of ours, especially in this 21st century, belongs to the dreamers and the doers the folks who see possibilities before obstacles, who see the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow before thinking about how high they have to climb to get up to that rainbow, the folks who don't just dream but who are willing to do the hard work that it takes to reach those dreams. Y'all are them. You are those dreamers and those doers. And that's truly what we celebrate today. When you walk across the stage today, you're going to make your family so proud. It's a victory for you and for your family. But it's also a tremendous victory for this community of Santa Fe, the state of New Mexico, and the United States. We live in a 21st century where brain power is the new currency of success. Those people, those communities, those cities, those states, those nations that cultivate it will be the ones that thrive and the ones that don't will fall behind. You are a special commodity, if I can use that word, a rare breed, but one that we desperately need more of. You will power the success of this community and this nation in the years to come. And so I wanted to come here today and let you know how proud all of us are, even from a little old town like San Antonio, of your accomplishment. And to say that when you have that Olympic moment of walking across the stage today, I know that that's just one more of many successful journeys in your life. It's a great victory for your family, for this state, and for the United States as we create with your brain power your dreams, and your work, another American century. Thank you.